In this lesson, we'll explain the basic concepts of thermochemistry and the first law of thermodynamics. In stoichiometry, we can write down a balanced equation showing the reactant and product molecules, but it's important to remember that, in addition to the atoms involved in the reaction, energy is also involved. For an exothermic reaction, we can think of energy as a product. Every time the reaction happens, it will generate the fixed amount of energy for every mole of the reaction. So as you perform a stoichiometry calculation to find out how much products are formed, you can use the same calculation to compute how much energy is delivered by the reaction. On the other hand, for an endothermic reaction, energy may be considered as a reactant. A fixed amount of energy must be supplied to the reaction every time it happens. The reason why we don't usually think of energy consciously as a reactant or product is because we often cannot control it very precisely, unlike atoms or molecules which we can measure out exactly by mass or by volume. Because reactions do not usually occur in an isolated environment, it can freely exchange energy with its surroundings. So an endothermic reaction may absorb the necessary energy from the outside, and an exothermic reaction may dump energy freely to the outside. This is why the first law of thermodynamics includes the surroundings as a part of the picture. If we are interested in following the energy content of a particular system, we can divide the universe into the system and its surroundings. Everything that is outside of the system is the surroundings. The first law asserts that the total energy of the universe is conserved. So if the system undergoes a transformation and its energy content changes, the exact same change must occur in the surroundings but in the opposite direction. The equation is delta E universe equals to delta E system plus delta E surroundings equals zero. Delta E system is the change in energy content of the system between the initial and final states, and delta E surroundings is the corresponding change in energy content of the surroundings. We can rewrite the first law this way to see that delta E surroundings must be exactly opposite to the systems. Delta E system is defined as the final energy minus the initial energy. So if the energy content goes down, delta E system is negative, and the process is exothermic. That is, the energy decrease in the system must be dumped into the surroundings. The reverse is true for endothermic processes. The two possible mechanisms by which energy is transferred between the system and surroundings is heat and work. The most common form of work in chemistry is pressure volume work, which occurs when a system expands or contracts. But there are other kinds of work too, such as the work involved when electrons are pushed through an electrochemical cell, which you will encounter in electrochemistry. So delta E system equals to heat Q plus work W. While the system has a certain energy content, it does not have a heat content or a work content because heat and work are mechanisms of energy transfers and they do not come into existence until the point of transfer begins. Just like while you can transfer money out of your bank account by either checks or ATM withdrawals, it would be incorrect to say you have a million checks in your account. Heat transfer is usually measured by the heat capacity of the surroundings multiplied by its temperature change. Pressure volume work is computed from the external pressure multiplied by the volume change of the system. If we can measure Q and W, we can determine the change in the energy content of the system. The energy content of the system is largely contained in the chemical bonds. And to a lesser degree in the interactions between molecules. So when a chemical reaction breaks and reforms bonds, its energy content can change substantially. If you do not break any bonds, but merely change the physical state of the system, the energy content can also change because you are altering the interactions between the molecules. For example, if you are changing a liquid into a gas, the much larger distance between molecules in the gas phase does not allow the molecules to attract each other anymore. 
Measuring heat is usually easier than measuring work. If you are interested in heat only, you will want to work with something other than energy. In chemistry, many reactions happen at constant pressure. Instead of energy, the common choice is to work with the enthalpy H. The enthalpy of the system is its energy plus its pressure times volume. So delta H equals delta E plus the change in P times V, which is P final times V final minus P initial times V initial. If the reaction happens at constant pressure, P final is equal to P initial and we can factor it out to get P times delta V. Putting in delta E equals to Q plus W from above. And work equals to negative P times delta V. We recognize that the work term cancels. So at constant pressure, delta H is just equal to Q. That means if we measure heat for a reaction at constant pressure, we are directly measuring the change in this enthalpy.